So one of the things that I wanted to do before we continue on is do a bit of codex stuff. Um, so... Let's go to the codex, because we've got quite a bit of stuff. We already did this. Um, Citadel and Galactic Government. Um, although the Citadel is equipped with Mass Effect Generating Element Zero cores, most of the gravity on the station is generated by the centrifugal force of rotation. Um, rotation, 3.5 minutes per revolution. Rotational gravity in wards, 1.02 of Earth's. Rotational gravity in the Presidium, 0.3 of Earth's. Total length, open, 44.7 kilometers. Diameter open, 12.8 kilometers. Ward length, 43.6 kilometers. Ward width, 330 meters. Presidium ring diameter, 7.2 kilometers. Presidium ring width, 543.53 meters. Exterior armor thickness, 13 meters. Population, 13.2 million, not including keepers, which we'll learn about later. Gross weight, 7.11 billion metric tons. Height of the Presidium Tower, 1,047 meters. It's a very impressive looking place. Humanity and the Systems Alliance. We already talked about this, I think. Ships and vehicles. Light lag prevents sensing in real time at great distances. A ship firing its thrusters at the Charon Relay can be easily detected from Earth 5.75 light, out, light hours, 6 billion kilometers away. But Earth will only see the event 5 hours and 45 minutes after it occurs. Due to the light speed limit, defenders can't see enemies coming until they have already arrived. Because there is FTL travel and the communications but no faster than light sensors, frigates are crucial for scouting and picket duties. Passive sensors are used for long-range detection, while active sensors obtain short-range, high-quality targeting data. Passive sensors include visual, thermographic, and radio detectors that watch and listen for objects in space. A, limb, a powered ship emits a great deal of energy. The heat and of the life support systems, the radiations given off by power plants and electrical equipment, the exhaust of the thrusters, starships, stand out plainly against the near-absolute zero background of space. Passive sensors can be used during faster than light travel, but incoming data is significantly distorted by the effects of the Mass Effect envelope and Doppler shift. Active sensors are radars and high resolution later, later, radars, laser detection and ranging, that emit a ping of energy and listen for return signals. Lidars have a narrower field of view than radar, but lidar resolution allows images of detected objects to be assembled. Active sensors are useless when the ship is moving at FTL speeds. It's really interesting, like, like all the stuff, all the details behind how the world works in the lore. Biotic amps. Biotics manipulate mass effect fields using dozens of element zero nodules within their nervous systems that react to electric stimuli from the brain. Amplifiers allow biotics to synchronize the nodules so they can form fields large and strong enough for practical use. Amplifiers can improve a specific discipline or talent. An implant is a surgically embedded interface port into which amps are plugged in. On humans, the implant is usually placed at the base of the skull for convenient access, though the user must be careful to keep it free of contaminants. Implant ports can fit a variety of amps, and there is a growing market for modifications and add-ons. The finest quality implants and amps are manufactured by Asari artisans, but the Alliance L3 implants, first deployed in 2170, are, are a significant step forward. Weapons, armor, and equipment upgrades. The development of practical manufacturing, manufacturing omni tools allows modern militaries a great deal of flexibility in equipment loadouts. A vast number of field modification kits or upgrades are available for common equipment such as weapons, armor, omni tools, biotic amps, and even grenades. An upgrade kit typically consists of less than a dozen unique parts and an optical storage disk. When loaded into an Omni tool, the OSD provides all technical specifications required to manufacture the tools and additional parts necessary to install the upgrade onto another piece of equipment. Assembly is typically modular and installation can be completed in less than a minute. Since Omni tools are designed to use common battlefield salvage materials such as plastic, ceramics, and light metals rendered into semi-molten Omni-gel for quick use, it is quite possible for a trained soldier carrying upgrade kits to customize gear on the battlefield to fit the current tactical situation. Cool. Uh, Roughly... We've got extinct races. 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction. 
Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. The Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. Mm. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. Interesting. That's pretty interesting, actually. The Geth are a humanoid race of networked AIs. They were created by the Quarians 300 years ago as tools of labor and war. When the Geth showed signs of self-evolution, the Quarians attempted to exterminate them. Exterminate. The Geth won the resulting war. This example has led to legal, systematic repression of artificial intelligences in galactic society. The Geth possess a unique distributed intelligence. An individual has rudimentary animal instincts, but as their numbers and proximity increase, the apparent intelligence of each individual improves. In groups, they can reason, analyze situations, and use tactics, as well as any organic race. Geth space is located at the trailing end of the Perseus arm, beyond the lawless Terminus systems. The Perseus veil, an obscuring dark nebula of opaque gas and dust, lies between their space and the Terminus systems. Mm. After the Geth secure a location, Ugh. they round up and impale dead and living bodies on mechanical spikes. The spikes rapidly transform these victims into withered husks, extracting water and trace minerals, and replacing them with cybernetics. Ugh. The cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into mindless killing machines. Some Alliance soldiers refer to the husk-generating spikes as dragon's teeth, a reference to the mythological berserkers who sprang up from the earth wherever the teeth of the dragon Eris were planted. Dragon's teeth and husks bear little resemblance to other pieces of Geth technology. No one is sure why a synthetic race would bother to drain the minuscule amount of recoverable resources from organic corpses, though the value of reusing them as shock troops is obvious. Obviously. The Citadel is an ancient deep space station, presumably constructed by the Protheans. Since the Prothean extinction, numerous species have come to call the Citadel home. It serves as the political, cultural, and financial capital of the galactic community. To represent their interests, most species maintain embassies on the Presidium, the Citadel's inner ring. The Citadel Tower in the center of the Presidium holds the Citadel Council Chambers. Council affairs often have far-reaching effects on the rest of the galactic community. Five arms, known as the Wards, extend from the Presidium. Their inner surfaces have been built into cities, populated by millions of inhabitants from across the galaxy. The Citadel is virtually indestructible. If attacked, the station can close its arms to form a solid, impregnable shell. That's impressive. For as long as the station has existed, an enigmatic race called the Keepers has maintained it. Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment, 
but makes it clear that the council is concerned about a situation. Right, they're sort of like the left hand of the council. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied, the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses. Mm. So they were unprepared when the second fleet, under Admiral Castany Drescher, launched a strong counter-offensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. Right. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. The Terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse, beyond the space administered by the Citadel Council or claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is populated by a loose affiliation of minor species, united only in their refusal to acknowledge the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Their independence comes at a price. The Terminus is fraught with conflict. War among the various species is common, as governments and dictators constantly rise and fall. The region is a haven for illegal activities, particularly piracy and the slave trade. At least once a year, a fleet from the Terminus invades the nearby Attican Traverse. These attacks are typically small raids against poorly defended colonies. The Council rarely retaliates, as sending patrols into the Terminus systems could unify the disparate species against their common foe, triggering a long and costly war. Biotics is the ability of rare individuals to manipulate dark energy and create mass effect fields through the use of electrical impulses from the brain. Intense training and surgically implanted amplifiers are necessary for a biotic to produce mass effect fields powerful enough for practical use. The relative strength of biotic abilities varies greatly among species and with each individual. There are three branches of biotics. Telekinesis uses mass lowering fields to levitate or impel objects. Mass raising kinetic fields are used to block or pin objects. Spatial distortion uses rapidly shifting mass fields to shred objects. Ow. Most organic species are capable of developing biotic abilities, though there are risks involved. Biotics are the result of an in utero exposure to element zero. This usually causes fatal cancers in the victim, but in rare cases, it coalesces into nodules within the fetus's developing nervous system. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I, even after playing all three games several times, there's a lot of stuff that's still new to me. Biotics is the ability of rare individuals to manipulate dark energy. Element zero can increase or decrease the mass of a volume of space-time when subjected to an electrical current. With a positive current, mass is increased. With a negative current, mass is decreased. The stronger the current, the greater the magnitude of the dark energy mass effect. Which is really interesting. In space, low mass fields allow FTL travel and inexpensive surface to orbit transit. High mass fields create artificial gravity and push space debris away from vessels. In manufacturing, low mass fields permit the creation of evenly blended alloys while high mass compaction creates dense, sturdy construction materials. That's really interesting. The military makes extensive use of mobility enhancing technologies. With mass effect utilizing fighting vehicles standard frontline issue in most military forces. Mass effect fields are also essential in the creation of kinetic barriers or shields to protect against enemy fire. I find it really interesting that the the series or the franchise itself is named after a technology of the game universe which doesn't really have any major isn't really a major component to the plot I mean it, it, it is in terms of that explains how you know how advanced that the 
the races have become. But but it's just interesting that that is the thing that is the name of the franchise. It, it works. Somehow it works. Omni tools are handheld devices that combine a computer microframe, sensor analysis pack, and manufacturing fabricator. Versatile and reliable, an Omni tool can be used to analyze and adjust the functionality of most standard equipment, including weapons and armor, from a distance. The fabrication module can rapidly assemble small three-dimensional objects from common reusable industrial plastics, ceramics, and light alloys. This allows for field repairs and modifications to most standard items, as well as the reuse of salvaged equipment. Omni tools are standard issue for soldiers and first in colonists. I definitely would love to have my own Omni tool. Combat hard suits use a dual layer system to protect the wearer. The inner layer consists of fabric armor with kinetic padding. Areas that don't need to be flexible, such as the chest or shins, are reinforced with sheets of lightweight ablative ceramic. The outer layer consists of automatically generated kinetic barriers. Objects traveling above a certain speed will trigger the barrier's reflex system and be deflected, provided there is enough energy left in the shield's power cell. Armored hard suits are sealable to protect the wearer from extremes of temperature and atmosphere. Standard equipment includes an onboard mini frame and a communications, navigation, and sensing suite. The mini frame is designed to accept and display data from a weapon's smart targeting system to make it easier to locate and eliminate enemies. Kinetic barriers, more commonly called shields, provide protection against most mass accelerator weapons. Whether on a starship or a soldier's suit of armor, the basic principle remains the same. Kinetic barriers are repulsive mass effect fields projected from tiny emitters. These shields safely deflect small objects traveling at rapid velocities. This affords protection from bullets and other dangerous projectiles, but still allows the user to sit down without knocking away their chair. The shielding afforded by kinetic barriers does not protect against extremes of temperature, toxins, or radiation. Yeah, that makes sense. Systems Alliance Military Jargon Ashore When a ship's crew leaves a vessel, they are ashore, though normally used regarding planets. It can refer to boarding a space station. Away When a ship releases the equipment tethering it to a space station or surface dock, it is away. Aye aye, the proper way to acknowledge an order. If took, told to attack the correspondence, correct response is aye aye sir. If asked, are you proud to be a marine, the correct response is yes sir. ASAP, pronounced ASAP, an acronym of as soon as possible, I think we knew that. Belay, stop, or cease. Bridge, the navigation center of a spacecraft where the steering is done. Captain's mass, non-judicial disciplinary proceedings by unit commanders. CIC, the com Combat Information Center, the command center of the spacecraft. The CIC is filled with sensor displays to make sense of the, out of the chaos of combat. DC, Damage Control, the containment repair of damage to, to a spacecraft. ECM, electronic countermeasures of, used to avoid enemy sensors from passive emissions asking to, uh, masking to active jamming. From passive emissions masking to active jamming. EVA, extravehicular activity, time spent in a pressure suit outside of a vehicle, spacecraft, or station. Flank, the flank is the side of a military formation. Since the soldiers are facing elsewhere, an enemy that can attack on the flank can often turn it up or roll it up. FNG, what freaking new guys? A derisive term for inexperienced personnel. Ground side, the surface of a planet. Helmsman, the crew member who pilots a, a spacecraft. Ladar, Light amplified detection and ranging, an active sensor that bounces lasers off an object to determine its bearing and distance. Lidar has sufficient resolution that the data can be reconstructed into an image. Shore party, spacecraft crews sent to shore on official business. Silent running, an old submariner's term used aboard the Normandy to denote when stealth systems are active. Sitrep, abbreviation of situation report, an evaluation of the current military situation. Spacer, someone who spent most of their life in space. XO, executive officer. The second in command of an Alliance warship. The EXO is responsible for administrative and personal matters. Yes. Or hugs and kisses, as can be said as well. Wow, that's a lot of jargon I didn't even know about. So that's pretty cool that they included that. 